All right then, if you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask that you turn to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8 is where we'll look in tonight for the first text. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Um, as I always say, um, pray for me as your pastor. Uh, it's important that I know the will of the Lord uh, if I'm going to lead one of the Lord's churches. Um, Romans 8, and we're going to begin reading in verse 13. Romans 8 and verse 13, the Bible says this, For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through, but if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your word this evening. We thank you for how cherished it is in our own hearts, Lord, in the days where it's being tried on every hand. Uh, we, got, we are uh, happy and glad that you have said it's uh, solid uh, in the, and below the heavens, Lord. We give you praise for that. God, we help to ask your help tonight as we preach your word. Fill this place where we're sitting with your presence. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, uh, Paul writing to the church at Rome about midway of this letter. And uh, if you follow what he was saying at Rome, and he could have well actually been there writing this while he was in prison. And uh, he had some concerns for the church at Rome for the beginning. Romans chapter 1 uh, how uh, tells us how he was fearful idolatry would creep into that group, and we know by the historic account it did. You know, there's two uh, lines of thought on that. One is that uh, the church at Rome ceased to exist, and the other one is that the church defected and began to take in idolatrous teachings which ultimately became the Catholic Church. And, and so we saw that Paul had some real fears. You know, the best thing that you can see, uh, you can do when you see some issues with your children uh, that, that is going in the wrong direction is to tell them about it. Sure. And uh, that's, that's what Paul was doing for the church at Rome. He saw some concerns and he brought them to their attention and said, hey, you need to look at this. Uh, this isn't what ought to be taught where you're at. And so he gives them that. So now we're about midway through. And he, in chapter 8, really begins to uh, look at grace and what grace means. And then in chapter 9, he becomes very, very pointed in the doctrine of divine election. And, and here in the middle of 8, we see this. Now, let me say this first of all. You can unequivocally, without a doubt, know if you're saved or lost. If that were not a truth, we would be a people most miserable. Right. We would not have anything to live for. Uh, all there would be is distress and worry and chaos. And if you think about the people that believe that, that's really where they're at. Uh, I, I've never seen someone that thinks they have to hang on to it to be a very happy person. Uh, they're stressed out and they're worried, and justly so, if that's what they believe. So in the 13th verse, Paul writes, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Now think about whom he's writing to. He's writing to people who purport to be saved. So if we let the flesh have the upper hand, if we let the flesh be the driver's seat, we're going to die. 
Now, that's not real popular teaching. And you know, I, I've heard the extreme, the other side, when people have been a drunk their whole life and, and dopeies and they finally write, wrap their truck around a tree somewhere, well, he must have been saved. No, that's foolishness. But we as the Lord's people that have a strong and true testimony, if we begin to let sin have the control in our life, he'll take us out. I know of one for sure that I knew, and I was very close to that person. And, and so we find then, as the Lord's people, that he gives us a barometer there. And so if, if he says this is the result, then we ought to be able to easily know what living after the flesh is. Now, we immediately think of, uh, you know, going to the bar and, and wearing ungodly clothing and on and on we might go. But listen, living after the flesh is as simple as this, doing what the flesh says instead of what the Spirit says. That, that's as easy as it gets. And so he says, if you're going to let the flesh be in control, you are going to die. But if ye through the Spirit. Now this whole context of this scripture will bring it back and back again. And that is capital S Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the action person of God here in this church age. If we live after Him, then it's going to be okay. Now, you can't live after or go in that direction if you don't know who he is. And I'm fearful in the days which we live, there's a lot more people who don't know than who do. You know why I think the you know uh, why I think the devil sent false doctrines concerning the Holy Ghost is to make us fearful of even acknowledging him. Because listen, if you don't have if you don't acknowledge him as a person of the Godhead in the Godhead, then who's going to lead and guide you? I, I really believe that's one reason that led to popery is, is that they wanted somebody to lead them, and they didn't understand and know the Holy Ghost, and so they took they took what they had, and, and so we find then that if we are a redeemed people. This is going to be for us. But if you through the Spirit, He has to be the guiding force, do mortify or kill the deeds of the body. Now, to kill the deeds of the body or the deeds that are manifested as sin, you have to know the Spirit. You have to understand and know that He's real. And his actions are real. And lost people don't do that. You, you, you know why lost people act the way they do? Because they don't have a guide. They don't, they don't have anyone to guide them in the direction of godly things. They lack the Word of God and they lack the Holy Spirit. And so they're going to act like lost people. Now, we, I want you to see also in the direction that the Holy Spirit will take us is to set this flesh aside. Now, again, we can get all kinds of stuff. And uh, my, my purpose tonight to teach on separation from this world. But uh, I will say this, to mortify this flesh simply is this, put it aside. Now, let me say this as well. The biggest problem with this flesh, as Brother Job, is pride. That is it. And, and, and so we, as the Lord's people, if we're genuinely saved, we should know the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost should be our director, and the direction He will take us is, is denying this flesh every time, getting it aside so that we might dwell there on the Spirit. And then He says, uh, uh, Do mortify the deeds of the body, and ye shall live. Verse 14, for as many as, uh, as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So we find a barometer there, and you know, I, I've never seen this personally, don't know enough about it to, to say, but I've just heard people say, uh, I, I know they deny it, but I'll give you an example that I've never seen. Uh, 
Campbellite people denied the existence of the Holy Ghost. Now, that is denying the Godhead. That is God denying who He is. And, and so, if they deny Him, they don't know the Spirit, then how could they possibly know Christ? Uh, it, it's an impossibility. Now, uh, many of you knew this man's pastor, and I won't say his name, uh, but he said he was raised in a Campbellite church. And he said one day they, uh, and I think he said it was on Halloween, they're having something down at the church building, and they said, where's the Holy Ghost? Where? And they had, a, they had a mop dressed like a witch back in their closet where they kept their broom and such. And you know what? According to what I understand about the Word of God, that's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And so if you don't know Him, if he's never come to you in the stillness of the night and manifested himself to you, whether it be in comfort or whether it be in, uh, in rebuking, listen, you may not have what you think you do because that is our vehicle, that is our person to know unto God, is it not? Uh, this word is an empty book if the Spirit's not there. It's no different than opening up a Sears and Roebuck if, if the Lord don't send the Holy Spirit and teach us divine things out of this book. And so Paul makes it very clear, that's how you know. That's how the uh, certainty comes within you. Verse 15, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. In other words, uh, People who are saved or not ought not ever just constantly be in fear. I preached that a couple of times, one, one time, uh, two different times, and I could tell I kind of offended a woman. And uh, but what I'm saying is true. The next, the next uh, uh, tornado that comes up from Georgia way. Listen, if you're here, yeah, these show some wisdom, get some safety, but. If God is God, He'll either protect us or He'll take us out. And if He takes us out, that's how He wanted it anyway. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and people don't like to look at that side of God and, and, and see Him for who He is. Uh, but that, that is a, a very true statement. And so there should be a sweetness and a presence there. Verse, 20, uh, verse 15, halfway through, but ye have received the spirit, again, of adoption. Now, uh, adoption, and many of us in the building tonight have adopted children, and you know what? Because of the, the confines of this flesh, worldly adoption don't always go as it should, you know? Not as long, not the way maybe parents wished it would. And the reason it's, it's hinged by this, this mortal flesh. But also, I want you to uh, see that what God does, He does well. He, he's not constrained by this flesh. He's not, he doesn't have the hiccups that our flesh does. And he said, yeah, you know what? Uh, Anna still calls me today. Uh, whenever we're texting, she calls me daddy. She, that, that is my name, and, and that is my name to her. And isn't it a wonderful thing that we can go unto the Lord even tonight and say, Abba, Father. Now that Abba means Father, Father, Father of Fathers, the very best of fathers. That's what Abba, Father means. And you can go unto Him, and you can, and you can cry out to Him. Why? Because He's your Father. He's the very best father that you could ever have. He, he is the closest and the dearest friend that you will ever know. And so we find then that you can know. And if I didn't know, I would find out why. Verse 16, the Spirit itself, the Holy Spirit, capital S Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our Spirit. Now, how is he communicating? Not in the flesh. You know what? The, the, the worst thing, you know, 
if somebody's giving you a testimony and they say, well, I just feel, <clears throat> well, you might want to stop them right there. Because it's not feeling anything. It's God saying, you're mine. And it's right here. You, it, it, he bears witness in and of itself. Does he use the Word of God? Most certainly. The best I understand from the, the reading of the Word of God, there's no other way that you can know Him. Because it says, uh, through the foolishness of preaching. And how you going to preach if you don't have a preacher? And how you going to preach if you don't have a Word? Have you ever been in a service and, and, and the Lord just... Uh, fills you so much that you begin to thank Him again and again for saving your unworthy soul. That, that, that's a reminder. That, that, that is an encouragement. Now, people who are lost have no idea what that even means. If you witness it up to them, you're like, what is he talking about? Well, what is he trying to say? And you know what? At one time, that would upset me a little bit. But it don't anymore because you know what? I'm speaking a language they don't understand. That would be like me trying to uh, speak a Russian to you tonight and, and you have no idea whatever that I'm talking about because they do not know the spiritual language. And the Spirit itself, the Holy Spirit, beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. We can know. Just as an aside, 1 John 3, 9, you can look at that, and again, you can know. Verse, 16, uh, verse 17, and the children, and if children, the heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that ye suffer with him. Now, another thing, and again, the health and wealth teaching, and Jack Howell's ministry and all the foolishness that goes, uh, what's the guy that says you're going to be rich if you're a Christian? Uh, I haven't found that to be true in, in 40 years. Yeah. Uh, but he says here, you're going to suffer with me. A trademark, a hallmark uh, of a genuinely redeemed man or woman is you're going to suffer. You're going to be made fun of. They're going to say, what are you doing down at that little building twice a week? We don't even understand why you're there. You could be watching the ball game. They will be totally ignorant of the truths that, that, that we cherish. And the reason why they're not saved and they don't understand suffering for Christ, if you be uh, if so be that you suffer with him, that we may also be glorified, excuse me, that we may all, that we may be also glorified together. So if you get that in its fullest text, if you don't suffer, you're not going to be glorified. Uh, and you know, I really believe this. I don't think that we're going to suffer on the church pew. We have some wonderful walls. It keeps us out of the cold. It keeps us out of the rain. You know what else it keeps us out of? It keeps us out of people coming in. And we can feel safe to say pretty much what we want. But out there, you take a stand on certain things and listen, they're going to be gunning for you. If you, if you begin to teach and say, hey, there is no other God but the great God Jehovah. That's not going to go well. There is no other means of salvation but grace and grace alone. That will even get some Christians up in arms against you. He died for his. That gets some people mad at you. And, and, and so we see then that if we're going, if, if we mean business with God, we are going to suffer, and that also becomes a hallmark of the redeemed. 
It becomes a hallmark of those individuals that are going to stand for truth. They're going to suffer for truth. And the reason they're willing to do that is because they belong to the Lord. Now, go with me just right over, at least in my Bible, the next page, Romans chapter 9. Uh, and you know the chapters and the verses are broken there for our study ability, but it's just one letter. Romans chapter 9, in the first verse, Paul says, I say the truth in Christ, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Now, he's fixing to uh, tell of his love of Israel and his grief of Israel. But he says, the truth came to me. It bears witness of the Holy Ghost. You, you, do you know any truths like that? I think back to the first time that Brother Down showed me the truth of election. And I will never forget this. He looked at me. We was in that little trailer by the Bumps Mills Church. And he said, Brother, are you mad at me? And I said, Well, how could I be mad at you? I said, It, it, it hits you in the Word of God. And, and he opened my heart to it. The Lord opened my heart to it. You have to have circumstances like that. Or all those doctrines in that book is of no avail. I'd rather have one revealed truth than a college degree with six letters at the end of my name. One revealed truth. Because you know what? That's something to be comfort. When, when, listen, when they come gunning for you, that'll be something to comfort to you. When, when, they, when they come after you, uh, my college algebra is not going to be a lot for me, is it? Right. don't remember that much of it anyway, but <laughs> certainly not going to help me now. And, and, and so we find then, as the Lord's people, that we certainly need to know if this is, is within us. Does the Lord ever bear witness to you through the Holy Ghost? That is the only question, really, of my whole sermon tonight that you're responsible to answer in and of yourself. Does he ever bear witness? Remember that old black uh, gospel song, Can I get a witness? That's what I'm talking about. If he doesn't witness that to you, then... Uh, Something's dreadfully wrong. Truth is not gained with, cher with a cherished heart unless it's revealed by the heart. That's how, that's how things will stick with you. That's how things will be, uh, will last you to the end times. And so we see that Paul uh, says, this is what the Lord showed me. This was an individual thing. <coughs> He says in verse 2 that I have great heaviness. Now, notice the revealing thing was this, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish myself a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, meaning Israel. He says that they had, the Lord God, the person of the Holy Ghost, has given me a, a terrible hard burden. For this group of people. You know that's a missionary that you want to put on the field. If he tells you that. Listen he's going to stick it out. Uh, you don't get those by reading the book. Now Lord willing. Maybe in the fall I'm going to teach. Uh, a little class on missions. But that's going to be my first thing. That's going to be my, in my first class. And it's going to be my second class. And it's going to be in my third class. Because without that God sent burden. That missionary will at least fail in spirit. He might start a huge church. And praise be to God if it's sound. But you know what? What I found in almost 27 years of ministry is this, if I'm not satisfying God, results really don't matter. Yeah. It really doesn't. And, and, and so we see then that as Paul is writing here, he had a, a, a burden, he had, he had a, uh, a heaviness that came through God. Now, 1 John chapter 5 a lot of debate about this. I usually try not to get into debates because I'm not very learned, but 
I believe this to be the writer of the Gospel of John as well. I think he wrote all four of the Johns, but that's just my idea. But um, here he says, uh, beginning in the first verse, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is Christ is born of God. Lost people, read that with me again. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. If you believe that in a spirit sense, if you believe that with your heart, uh, salvation has and will come. Now, I'm not talking about believing that there was a man named Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, history books will tell you that, but there's no spiritual value. We're getting back to something revealed by the Holy Ghost. The person of Christ is the answer to your sin, is a revealed truth that comes only by God. And you know what? That's what differs us between us and Armenian Baptists is that we believe that the convincing is a work of God and not a work of man. And so we find that he's very clear here, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. Now, I've heard a lot of sermons out of the first half of that verse, uh, but I haven't heard as many out of the rest of that verse, and the reason why it tells us that we have to love one another. And that if we don't have a spiritual love for one another, we may not have what we said we had. You ever, you ever met Christians just as mean as dogs? Wouldn't, wouldn't throw a bucket of water on me if he's on fire. <coughs> I, I, I don't see the compassion there, do you? I, I've seen sound men just present with a haughty, mean spirit. That ought not to be so among God's people, should it? We ought to love one another. We ought to be uh, be prayerful one for the other. And so he gives us one of the hallmarks of the redeemed, and that is a spirit of love. Verse two: By this we know that we by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments. Man, that'll that'll throw a wrench into. A, uh, it's a Baptist song on it. Not only does most of us not keep his commandments, we don't even know what they are. So, well, I've never killed anybody. Have you ever thought about it? <laughs> uh, I've met a few I'd like to take down. You know, you know what? Uh, I wouldn't know that's wrong, and I wouldn't be be convicted of the Holy Ghost for even the thought of it. Number one, if I was saved. And number two, if I didn't know it was in the very law of God. And, and so we as the Lord's people, uh, for the redeemed, for the saved, the law of God has a lot more meaning than those that are lost. It's not a set of rules. Uh, the honest people have a, a set of rules called the ordinon, and, and that's what they live by because the preachers tell them they're too stupid to understand the Bible. So they, you know what that sounds like? That sounds like Catholic Church to me. And, and so they go on to this little uh, set of rules for the rest of their life, hoping that it might work out okay. And you know what? Uh, they follow those rules. They mean business with that, those rules. Now, are they the word of God? Certainly not. Are they spiritually inspired? You know they're not. But at least they know what they are. At least they know what they are. And so we find that for the redeemed, a trademark is doing how you deal with others. Verse 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous they're not hard they're not difficult for whosoever is born of god overcometh the world now a lot of people think oh man i'm gonna be president i'm gonna be at the top of the world no 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 the sin and the degradation of this world the things that will pull you down if you're genuinely saved Listen, he's going he, to make you above that. 
He's going to give you sustaining grace. He's going to give you uh, uh, the ability not to get involved. That you've overcome. He's overcome. And through him, you overcome this present world. The sinfulness of this world. The debauchery of this world. The disease of this world. He has given us a victory over that uh, when we follow him. And, and so John makes it very clear. Listen, this is not a grievous thing. It's a good thing. Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. Now the flip side is this. We get back into perseverance of the saints. And everybody that, that likes to tool up when they get to the P, perseverance, oh, we're saved forever. Yes, you certainly are if you persevere. Not just the preserving hand of God, which of course is glorious, but see, the preserving hand of God will make you live. That's perseverance. You get out there in the world and live like dogs, never convicted about it, never rebuked by the Holy Ghost with it. Listen, I doubt that you're saved. I doubt that you have anything to start with. And, and so we find here, as Paul, excuse me, as John is writing these people, he says, listen, you're going to make it, you're going to persevere. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our doctrine, even our faith. How much do you believe in God? He said, I'll take care of you. Do you believe that? You, you know where you'll believe it more when you don't have very much of your own? Yeah. When, when you're not real certain where that next meal is coming from, from you believe it more. Now, uh, kind of chuckled, I was praying in bed one night after uh, Sarah and Donna and I went to bed, and me and Donna and the girls were in there, and like, we ain't got nothing to eat. I said, yeah, I need to go to the store and get some groceries. And then I remembered, if we were really hungry, we have a floor-to-ceiling cabinet literally full of canned vegetables. Were we out of food? No, we wanted something different, didn't we? Just wanted something that we didn't have. You know what that is? That's what they call flesh. Wanting something that you don't have. And, and, and so we see then, sometimes he has to take our success away to remember, to remind us to say, hey, I'm in control. Not you. You don't provide for yourself. I provide for you. And uh, it's a good, good thing. And so he says, here the, the writer John says, listen, if this, this, this is, huh, you're going to, uh, do you have faith in me? You're going to overcome with faith. Verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. You believe that tonight? You put it into practice? Not just believe, not just, I mean, but do you believe it like this? When things are going chaotic, that that's your help. That that's your only answer. You know, uh, and, and I, I won't get into the George Floyd trial too deeply because I don't know a whole lot about it. I tried to keep my nose out of it. But I believe that cop was guilty. That's just my own opinion. If you want to stone me, let's do it outside the building so that we get the carpet messed up. But if that had gone another way, if he would have been found not guilty, you're talking about pandemonium. You're talking about, you remember when it first happened and they tried to burn the courthouse down at Nashville? That was in May of last year. Listen, that wouldn't be a drop in the bucket of what would happen. Where are you going to look for comfort in a day like that? I, I remember I sat and talking to a couple of my buddies at work, Abraham and Lewis, and Lewis is a young guy, he's 34. He's a little bit like, man, Larry, I, I'm nervous about this. This is, uh, what, what are we going to do? Clarksville is it's a big town and it's got, I, I, and then Lewis thought, well, it would be rough. And I guess I had a smile on my face. And they said, what are you smiling about? 
I said, well, the Lord's got this. I said, he's got it. This, this is fine. I said, I don't, and I told them, I said, I think he's guilty as, as a dog. But the Lord has this. And you know why that was comfort for me? And they were looking at me like I had seven eyes. I just don't understand. Right. And, and, and so we find then, if you know him, in the day of conflict, if you if you know him in the day of trial, this will this is how this is how it will work out. Verse six: This is he that came by water, meaning the Lord Jesus Christ and blood. Uh, I personally believe that means he was born of a virgin, born of water and blood, but being having the likeness of sinful man. Even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness because the Spirit is truth. Now, listen to me. This, this Bible is truth. If you've been able to log in to some, some of the classes that Brother Ken is having online, you're going to see why this particular one is true. But... I want you to see what makes it more, and I love that teaching, but what makes it more real to me, it bears witness right here. This is how, one of the reasons I know it's true is because the Holy Ghost bears witness and say, hey boy, this is it. You listen to this. You, you listen to what this book says. And that's what he does for the redeemed. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and if you remember in John's Gospel, he, uh, the Word was almost synonymous with the Lord Jesus Christ. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, that living uh, triune God in, in one person. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, little s spirit, meaning the inward part of man, the water, which I'm assuming is being born, and the blood. Now, I personally does not mean that's humankind blood. I've seen lots of blood in my life. Don't bother me to look at it. But what, what, if you're saved, genuinely born again, it'll break out on you like chicken pox. And it will be manifested in what you do in this flesh, in this world. And you know what? I've seen a lot of people, oh, how I love Jesus, and deny Him in everything they do. Listen, it just doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. So, do you know the Holy Ghost? When it says the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit... Do you even know what I'm talking about? Have you, have you ever experienced the certainty of this book? That he's convinced you of something of more than just some writings. That he's convinced you that this is the very word of God. If he's not done that, make you call it an election sure. Because you may not have what you think he did. 